Hi! In this quick video tutorial, we're going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to take this problem from an AP physics test from a few years ago and use a circuit simulator to solve the problem, as well as validate some of the intuition that we should have about this circuit. So I'm going to get started by just reading the problem. In the three circuits shown above, the batteries are all identical and the light bulbs are identical. Okay. And in a circuit 1A, um, the single light bulb is connected to the battery. Circuits 2 and 3, two light bulbs are connected to the battery in different ways. Um, the light bulbs are labeled A3. Cool. So the first thing they're asking us to do is to rank the magnitude of the potential differences across the uh, five light bulbs here. Okay, so that seems like it's going to be pretty easy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by modeling these circuits, right? I'm going to start with circuit one, and the voltage source or the battery here is just a voltage source, um, and I'm going to call that C1 um, because, oh, sorry, I messed that up. I'm going to call that C1. Um, it's a one volt voltage source. I don't think it matters what the actual voltages are. Um, and then the light bulbs I know are just resistors, uh, but there's actually a cool thing in Circuit Lab. If I scroll down to the bottom, um, we actually have a light bulb component, um, and internally it's just modeled as a resistor. You can set the resistance of it, um, but you know the diagram is a little cooler and it looks like a light bulb, so I'm going to use that, and I'm going to call that A. Um, I finish wiring it up here. Uh, drop my ground node in, and I think that is just Circuit One here. In fact, I'm just going to label it Circuit One. It's a pretty simple circuit. Um, and then for circuit two, it looks like B and C are also going to do a battery. Um, and the two light bulbs are just going to be uh, in series with each other. So B uh, is basically connected to C and then back to the light bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste my other um, circuit. And I'm just going to move this down a little bit to give me room um, uh, for my other light bulb. And then copy paste the light bulb and drop that right in there. And I'm going to call that B. And I'm going to call that, oops, I moved it, um, call that C. So we have B and C, um, and then this circuit is going to be 2. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and label that circuit 2 as well. Just so we know what we're talking about. And let's look at circuit 3. Uh, so we have D and E here, and it looks like D and E are in uh, parallel with each other. Uh, so we notice that the top of this uh, one of the terminals of the light of the battery are connected to the one of the terminals of each of the light bulbs here. So that's a, a parallel circuit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy circuit one again here, and paste that down here, move on. I'm going to leave that up there. Um, copy another light bulb across, and just wire that up, and then call that guy D, and call that guy E. So I believe this is it for my three circuits. Um, now we have it all modeled in circuit lab, so let's try looking at the problem um, and see if we can uh, solve A here. Rank the magnitudes of the potential differences across the light bulbs. So they basically want me to order the voltage drop across each of the light bulbs from highest to lowest. Um, so the easiest way to do that is to just simulate in DC mode and just uh, check out what the voltages are. So I'm going to go ahead and click at the top node of A, um, and Circuit Lab automatically populates both the voltage and the current. I don't want the current, so I'm just going to X that out. Um, this is the voltage at this node right here of my light bulb. Um, implicitly, that is the voltage from here to the ground node of this circuit, uh, so to zero. And the other end of this light bulb is actually connected to ground. Um, so from here to zero is actually just this expression. If I run the DC solver, this makes sense. It's one volt across this light bulb. Um, D and E uh, look a lot similar. So I'm just gonna get those out of the way now. I click and click, um, and then I remove the current because I don't care about the current yet. Um, and this is the voltage um, at my light bulb E dot NA, right? NA is this node up here. Um, and this is my voltage at DNA. Uh, and that's voltage here across to zero. Um, and again, that makes sense. That's just one volt. The interesting one is these two. Um, so if I start off by clicking here, uh, this is going to auto populate my voltage uh, B to NA and also the current uh, for NA. Get rid of the current. Um, but that's not actually what I want, right? Because this is from B dot NA all the way out to zero. Um, so that's just going to be the one volt. But the other end of this 
light bulb isn't connected to ground. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this expression and I'm going to do minus V of B, which is my light bulb, dot and B, which is the other terminal of this light bulb, um, which is actually what I want, right? I want this node minus this node, which is actually only 500 millivolts, so that's interesting. Um, and to get C, I basically do the same thing. Um, get rid of these currents um, uh, and then change this guy to C dot N A uh, minus B of C dot N B. Um, and that's also 500 millivolts, which makes sense. Um, half of it goes across one, the other half goes across the other one. This is just um, a battery with two resistors uh, in series across them. Um, so that's enough information for us to solve A, right? Um, the highest magnitude of voltage drops are A, E, and D, uh, and followed by B and C um, are both equal uh, and less than A, E, and D. Cool. All right, so let's move on. Um, let's do B. The batteries all start with an identical amount of usable energy and are all connected to the light bulbs of the circuit at the same time. In which circuit will the battery run out of usable energy first? So that's neat. Um, this is basically assuming that um, our three batteries, C1, 2, and... Oops, I didn't think that's three just to be consistent here. Um, C's 1, 2, and 3 um, are, are batteries that are gonna run out. Um, and they all start sort of powering these light bulbs at the exact same time, which one's gonna run out first? Uh, there's actually a couple of ways to approach this problem, uh, but I think the most intuitive one for me, at least when I read this, is why don't I just measure the current coming out of the batteries, right? If I measure the current, then the one that is sourcing the biggest current, that's the one they were gonna run out first because they started out with the same amount of charge. So let's go ahead and do it that way. I'm gonna clear these out um, because I don't need them anymore. Um, and to measure the current is just as before, I just click on this node right here. That's got to auto-populate both the voltage and the current at that node. This time I'm going to get rid of the voltage because I don't care about that one. And I'm going to repeat that for two and for three uh, and get rid of these voltages. And this is going to be the current at battery one, two, and three at the A terminal. And when I run the DC solver, all these currents are negative because this is current flowing out of these terminals. Um, and I think this is basically just my answer. Um, the current at C3 um, is negative 20 milliamps, um, which is higher than at C1 at 10 um, and higher than C2 at five. And intuitively, I think this makes sense to me, right? Because this is two resistors in parallel. So they're going to have the same current flowing through them because V equals IR, the V is the same, R is the same, they both have the same I. These are the same, uh, I as A, right, because the voltages is the same, the resistances are the same, except there are two of them down here. So this one battery has to power two of them. Uh, so it's got twice as much current. Um, for C2, for my circuit two here, B and C are in series with each other. So they have the exact same current flowing through them. So this battery is seeing twice the resistance. Um, so it's actually half the current that is sourcing. Uh, it's all fairly intuitive V equals IR stuff, but here we are seeing it work in the simulator. Now there's actually something cool you can do with CircuitLab here um, that you might not necessarily do if you were doing this on paper, is think about this problem from a power perspective. Um, now there's no way to see the power by just clicking around in CircuitLab, but we do have a custom expression for it. So if you type P of C1 in this case, this is the power flowing through um, C1. Um, is 10 milliwatts and we can actually do the same thing uh, for C2 and do the same thing uh, for P of C3. Um, and power in this case is a really neat way to look at it uh, because it's in watts which is the way you're used to seeing light bulbs be talked about right so C3 is uh, sourcing 20 milliwatts which is you know twice as much as C1 um, uh, and four times as much as C2. And the really, really cool thing you can do here is you can also check out the power um, through the actual light bulbs, which in this case, uh, right, for C for circuit one is pretty easy. Uh, it's just the exact same amount as um, the battery. Uh, but the interesting part here is if I do power for D, um, power for E, 
are going to be the same. So it's 10 milliwatts for each of them, which means these light bulbs are all going to be equally as bright, um, which actually tells you why C3 is gonna run out faster, right? C3 is powering two light bulbs that are equally as bright, um, but it's powering two of them, as opposed to C1, which only has sort of half the amount of light to shine out. Um, and then for C2, um, we can do power B is only 2.5 milliwatts, uh, which is actually a fourth of uh, what D and E are. Um, and P at C um, actually should also be 2.5. It is. Um, so all of these light bulbs are actually going to be at fourth as bright. Uh, and that means C2 is only powering half as much brightness as C1. Uh, so it's gonna run at last. Um, so that's how we do it. This is how we take a, a pretty typical physics problem and solve it in a circuit simulator. Um, we'll have a link to this circuit in the comments of this video. And if you have any other ideas of topics you would like us to cover or see in this video tutorials, please let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.